At this time of year, we often think of the blessing of family and friends. We must never forget, however, that the greatest blessing of Christmas is Christ Himself. Today, we look with Scott Pauley at the eternal blessings found in the Word of God. People spend a great deal of time and money every year looking for a perfect Christmas tree. Now, whether you uh, use a real tree or you have purchased an artificial tree, everybody wants the tree to be perfect. They want it to look a certain way. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's amazing to me how we decorate and prepare for a Christmas. And then within just a day or two, suddenly uh, the tree is looking pretty rough. And uh, even the things around it are not nearly as, as sharp as they were before. Uh, I want to talk to you today about a perfect Christmas tree. And there's only one perfect tree, and that was the tree that the Lord Jesus chose to sacrifice himself on. Imagine a tree that God himself created and that the Son of God would hang on for you and for me. We read about that tree in 1 Peter chapter 2. Beginning in verse number 24, the Bible says, "...who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed." The greatest tree of all time, the tree that stands out, to me, a perfect Christmas tree, has nothing to do with the tree that we bring into our home every year for decoration, it has everything to do with Calvary, with the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I know that some people are against decorating a Christmas tree. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 10 talks about people taking wood and making idols out of it and decorating it and that kind of thing. And some people believe that Jeremiah 10 is a reference to Christmas trees and that the use of trees around the holidays is a pagan tradition. If you study a little history, you find that actually the first people to bring evergreens into their homes for Christmas and to decorate them were devout German Christians. Uh, there's actually a story about Martin Luther one night walking home on a cold winter night, looking up and seeing the stars shining through the branches of the trees. And when he got home, he told his children uh, the story of what he had seen and that it reminded him that the Lord Jesus left heaven to come to earth and they started the tradition of lighting candles and placing lighted candles on the tree. And to this day, we still put lights on a tree. When I look at a Christmas tree, uh, that's the kind of thing I'm thinking of. The goodness of God and uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But whether you choose to use a tree or not, that's not the issue today. It's not my purpose to deal with that. Either way, there's only one perfect Christmas tree. And that tree's not connected to his birth. That tree is connected to his death. Not to a cradle, but to a cross. Now, the last few days, we've been talking about Christmas blessings. And I want to talk to you over the next study or two about some of the blessings that grow out of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the spiritual blessing that we celebrate at Christmas is not reserved simply for Bethlehem. Friends, that wasn't the end. That was just the beginning of why Christ came. And so think with me today. Go with me all the way to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Think, consider this perfect Christmas tree. This tree was raised by God. The Bible says in Galatians that in the fullness of time, God sent forth His Son. Right on time, in God's perfect time, God created a tree that His Son would be hung on. People argue about whether uh, this was a Roman cross or a rough tree, but it doesn't make any difference. It came from a tree that he created, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. This tree was not only raised by God, this tree was rooted in love. It wasn't held up by hatred. It wasn't held up in its place by a hole dug in the ground by soldiers. No, the thing that held that cross up and the thing that held Christ on that cross was the love of God. Think of this, love lifted up between heaven and earth, between life and death, for my sin and for your sin. Oh, what a wonderful Savior we have. 
who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. This tree was not only raised by God and rooted in love, but this tree was robed with Christ. There was only one beauty on that tree, and that beauty was the sinless Son of God. It may have looked terrible seeing him hanging on that tree, bleeding and suffering, and yet I say to you, it is a beautiful place because it was there that mercy and truth met together. It was there in the words of the psalmist that righteousness and peace kissed each other. It was there that heaven touched earth and made a way for earth to touch heaven. This tree was robed with Christ. But finally, don't miss this truth. This tree was not only raised by God and rooted in love and robed with Christ, but this tree reaches to all people. Listen to the verse again, 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, make it personal, that me, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. You see, the cross is a bridge. The Lord Jesus took a holy, righteous God in one hand and unholy, fallen sinners like me and like you in the other and made a way that the two could be brought together again. This tree reaches to all people. Would you picture for just a moment the Lord Jesus with his arms open wide on that cross. With arms open wide, he says to the whole world, I love you this much. And with one hand, he reaches to one sinner. And with one hand, he reaches to another sinner. You remember the thief on each side of him. And Jesus, the Bible says, in the midst. That's where he always was, in the midst of sinners reaching to them. In fact, this perfect Christmas tree is symbolized all through the New Testament. And there's quite a progression to it. If you begin in Acts chapter 5 and verse 30, we read these words. The Bible says in Acts 5 and verse 30, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. He's speaking, of course, to the Jewish leaders and their part in, in the slaughter of the Lord Jesus. Then when you come to Acts chapter 10 and verse number 39, the Bible says, And we are witnesses of all things that he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Again, they killed him. They hung him on a tree. Then when you come to Acts chapter 13 and verse number 29, you read these words, powerful words. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. So now we move from the tree to the sepulcher. Then when you come to Galatians 3, verse 13, the Bible says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. But finally, you find him in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, our verse for the day, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Do you see the progression of truth? It wasn't just about the Jews. It was for all people. It was for me and for you. We meet Christ there. The light of this tree was not wrapped around it, but nailed to it. It was topped not with a star or an angel, but with an inscription, the King of the Jews. The gift at this tree was not under it, but on it. And its life is not just for the holidays, but for all eternity. Boniface, the English missionary to Germany in the 8th century, uh, found a certain group of people worshiping idols, and he destroyed them. He took an axe and chopped them down. And he said to them that no tree should represent God. He said, but if there is an object lesson in any tree, it's the object lesson of the evergreen, always alive and always the same. Friend, that's our Lord Jesus, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Every good thing in life and eternity is connected to the Lord Jesus. Visit us at scottpauley.org for more information on knowing Christ and making Him known to others. From the Pauley family and all of us at Enjoying the Journey, we want to wish you and your family God's greatest blessings this Christmas. Thank you.